Hello and welcome to episode 13 of Friends of the Show, a podcast hosted by Stephen W. Skinner, where he chats with one of his internet pals. This week's friend is Sarah Joy Shockey, at Sarah Joy Shockey on Twitter. So please enjoy Friends of the Show, episode 13, with Sarah Joy Shockey. To breathe and know you are alive is wonderful. Because you are alive, everything is possible. Thich Nhat Han. Thank you very much for listening. Welcome to Friends of the Show. Uh, today's week's guest is the lovely and talented Sarah Joy Shockey. Sarah, welcome. Thank you, Stephen W. Skinner. How are you? <laughs> I'm great. Uh, thank you for very much for joining us. And what a lovely quote you have uh, provided for us. Um, would you care to share uh, any any more thoughts about this quote? Well, I like um, quotes and I like nice things and I like like hope and optimism. And I have always, since I was maybe 19, had like a little moleskin that I would carry around with um, quotes that I would just put into it. And I finally graduated to a new one. And I transferred like maybe my top 10 quotes from the old book into the new one. And then when you were saying we're going to do the quote, I was like, I'll go through those. And that I guess was the number one out of all of them. That was the one that I wanted to read the most because it kind of sums up everything. It's like, yeah, you you have a chance. Like whatever this is, like why ever we're here, like you have a chance to be here and experience this, and that's awesome. Yes, I think it's a great quote. Definitely worthy of a number one spot in your top ten quotes to be transferred. <laughs> top uh, ten, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, so it's coming from like the Buddhist sort of philosophy, right? That Thich Nhat mm-hmm. Tan is a sort of Buddhist philosopher, and yeah, I think that quote is great. Uh, because you are alive, everything is possible. You hear that, listeners? You hear yeah. it? <laughs> it's true. I feel like some people are like, ooh, that's a lot of pressure. And it's like, yeah, or not. Like, or you can just sit somewhere and like look at the lake or the trees or, you know, it doesn't have to be everything. Yeah, everything and nothing is possible. Mm. Yeah. Depends on how you look at it. So thank you very much for joining us again. Um, uh, we should let the listeners know a little about you if they don't already, which they should. Uh, at <laughs> Sarah Joy Shockey on Twitter. Um, one, of, one of the most delightful people that I've encountered online. And she really does it all. You write stories, uh, perform comedy. You co-host uh, Marty and Sarah Love Wrestling Podcast. Uh, mm-hmm. You do art, like drawings, which are great. The little stories. Yeah, long form writing on Medium. Oh, man. Holy cow. You do everything uh and even oh, thanks even uh, i listen to the podcast and you do the theme song yeah i do uh i dabble in the ukulele dabbling in the uke yeah well it was great yeah. i really enjoyed it um so thanks. yeah multi-talented is what i'm trying to get at uh, renaissance renaissance so called me that once sarcastically and i was like you know what i actually kind of uh i'll take it i'll take yeah. that one because it's I'll normally use it politely. yeah because it's uh i mean Right, the patriarchy turned that term Renaissance man, but why can't it be Renaissance person? Yeah, Renaissance anybody. I don't know. The idea it... of a Renaissance sounds just so like ooh. ooh you're going la, to a party la. and showing off all of your skills you've taught yourself. How wonderful! Yes, you're holding court. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, someone passed the uke. <laughs> She'll play the song Lady, on the Lady uke. Sarah dabbles in it, you see. <laughs> oh, is there a uke? Oh, anyway, here's Wonderwall. <laughs> so that's great. Yeah, just wanted to let everyone know that you're great in a lot of different <laughs> ways. This is the normal <laughs> buttering the guest up at the intro. What a warm podcast you've made. Yes, yeah, so just like Tick Natan would like, be positive. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I should mention uh, the podcast if everyone wants to check that out at Marty Sarah Pod on Twitter. And maybe you want to tell us a little bit about your podcast. Of course I do. Um, it drops every Thursday. It's part of the MLW Radio Network, uh, which stands for Major League Wrestling, mm. and it's um, a comedy wrestling podcast. So we talk about what's going on in pro wrestling, um, WWE, but also like New Japan and indie wrestling, and it's uh, just two buddies talking about wrestling, and it's real fun. Yeah, it is real fun. Uh, you do a lot of fun uh, stuff on there, like fun voices, and everyone should definitely go check it out. Uh, listen to Marty and Sarah Love Wrestling, uh, now available on iTunes. Yeah, it's 
on Spotify too. That was so fun. And like oh, iHeartRadio. Wow. Like when you get into the, a platform that puts the podcast everywhere, it's so funny to me that it's like, oh yeah, I can just search for myself on Spotify now, I guess. Wow, that is great. Yeah. So all I don't the... know why iTunes isn't a big deal, but like Spotify, now that's making it. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah. And iHeartRadio, right? Like they just tripled your audience. Potentially. Yeah, all these teenagers are going to find us. Are teenagers okay. listening to iHeartRadio or am I stuck in 2004? Oh, I don't know. Let's uh, ask the teenagers. If you're listening, <laughs> send Sarah a <laughs> note. Let her know. Hashtag yes, I teen. <laughs> okay, so now that we've covered that, you do a great podcast. You got some writing available also on Medium. So this is like a little bit more long form writing uh, as opposed to mm-hmm. sort of what I'm more used to in the 140 characters or less genre of Twitter. But I mean, I'm in there too. <laughs> oh, for sure. And um, it, it's long form, but it's also sort of broken up in little bite-sized chunks. So it kind of is like Twitter, right? Yeah, it's interesting. It's not what I set out to do or could have even described to you. Like I wasn't doing this a year ago, but I watch my time hop every day. I watch it. I look at it. I see what I was up to. And uh, I was just this time last year starting to draw more like just kind of random one off things. I had this real deep chuppy phase where I made up a mascot for Heinz and uh, his name's Chuppy and he's a big blob of ketchup and he has all these condiment friends. And I had a solid year where I was drawing chuppies like every single day. I'd be like parodies, like instead of legally blonde, it'd be like legally chup. And then I'd draw chuppy as Reese Witherspoon. Like it was this weird obsession and I got so much better at drawing because I was doing that. But then after a while, it was like I did this giant uh, Chupmas Carol where I like cast all the condiments as different Christmas Carol like <laughs> characters like Bob <laughs> Cratchit was like Chup Cratchit and like the mayo, Mayor Vinegoil was like Scrooge. It was this giant project. It took like months to finish. And then after that, I was like, huh, I think I'm I think I'm chupped out for a little bit. And so I was starting to draw a little like um you know, just like vignettes would be like a little child carrying like a wheat stalk and it would have like a little quote about it or something. And then I want to say like almost a year ago, I did my first little like postcard series and I might've even, I don't remember, I think I put on medium, but it was just like a really short story with pictures and writing. And I was like, that was kind of cool. And then after that, I did like a whole long Beauty and the Beast, like line drawings and text. And then I was like, okay, this might be a form that I can work in. And now that's a lot of the stuff that I do lately is on Medium with they're like comics and stories. People call them like little emotional comics. And I'm like, yeah, that's about right. Okay, yeah, that's a good uh, that's a good moniker for those. So, yeah, it's little vignettes with the, a little bit of text uh, takes you. Mm-hmm. It's like a little sort of like a children's book almost, but dealing with sort of more deeper issues, let's say, and more real yeah, yeah. emotions. It's just stuff that I sort of have come to figure out as I'm going through. I think the biggest thing was like realizing like, oh, I'm anxious so much and it's not most of it's not real and and like the more you can kind of talk to yourself directly about that kind of stuff the less you sort of like shove it inside until you have like you know I would get like stress rashes or stomach aches like there's all these like manifestations of stress that I just thought everybody had all the time and then I was like oh I'm just not dealing with stuff and then by doing these lovely stories you're sort of getting it out right Yeah, or it's almost like I figured it out and now can I word it or depict it in some way that maybe it will help somebody else who's feeling a similar way. Not that I have it like all the answers, but it's kind of a fun challenge to be like, yeah, so I figured out this concept in my brain, but can I explain it so that, you know, like my family knows what I'm going through or like people that read it randomly. It's kind of fun to figure that out. And then I and I always feel good after they're done. Yeah, and I love reading them. I like uh, all of them. Um, I'm putting a link to one uh, in the show notes called Silence, which I really like. Do you remember oh, yeah, that one? Oh, you like that one? Uh, that I was... felt like that one, I loved it, but I felt like it was, there's like a couple that I love and they go out and then they get kind of like a very small reaction, which is fine because you have to tell yourself like, I'm going to do this either way. <laughs> but you know what it's like when you have a tweet where you're like, yeah. oh, this is going to fucking crush. <laughs> and then it's like, okay, not a lot. Maybe I'll retweet it myself. Still not a lot. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'll let that one go. 
Classic. Um, but I really uh, like that one. And there's like a, a recent one that I did about my grandparents' house that I was like really going back and forth about. Like, I was like, this is good and I like it. But it's, I just like, I feel like I'm running up a hill trying to get people to read it. But it's like, well, that happens sometimes. And you just like, that's no reason to not make something because the amount of like, it's like if one person reads it, that's awesome. If nobody reads it, you still did it. And that's still better than not doing anything. Like you did it for yourself. I agree. And since I like reading them, you should keep doing them just for me. Hey, thanks. <laughs> just for you. <laughs> no, but everyone else should definitely go check them out. They're really good and might even jerk a little tear from your eye uh, if you read some of the the more emotional ones. And there are certain ones where I, if I hit the same point and almost start crying, I'm always like, I think this might get, I think this might get people a yeah. little bit. Yeah. So uh, yeah. those are great. Uh, so everyone go check them out on Medium. And uh, like I said, link in the show notes. Check out that silence one. It's great. And yeah, it's sort of like get it, you get to know you a little bit with each one, right? So they're kind of like really seem personal seeming. Yeah, I want to do more um, just plain story ones. Um, but, you know, it's like everything comes in phases. And I don't know, like it's never always going to be one way or the other. But for the most part, they're very me centric. Yeah, I mean, you had your chuppy phase, which was great, by the way. We didn't, <laughs> uh, I didn't even make any notes to ch- talk about the chup, uh, but no, it well, it's is so great. Because <laughs> when we, when I first sort of like uh, became acquaintances with you online, that you were deep in mm-hmm. chup, like you were heavy into it, all of, like the Pride and Prejudice chuppy one, I think I remember. Yeah, I think that, that one was, was great. actually the, the big last hurrah of chuppy was um, Pride and Prejudice and chuppies. And I just did vignettes from Pride and Prejudice because. I thought, again, I like casting. So I was like, ooh, I think I could cast all the Pride and Prejudice characters as uh, characters from the Chuppy verse. That's my DC. That's my Marvel. Yeah, I thought it was very, uh, very cool. You created your whole universe with all the condiments, like everything, like you were saying, from ketchup mustard to like Sriracha, like Sir Racha. There is this beautiful love story between Ranch Ranchley and Chip Oatley and like Ranch Ranchley is this very like open cowboy and like Chip Oatley is like you know like oh don't bother me but it's like they're totally in love with each other and I feel like I should revisit that at some point at least just to I think all of them could have origin stories Chipotle Ranch yeah Mm -hmm. yeah all of them could have sort of their own spin-offs and origin stories you know you could tell all the different stories from all the different uh, condiments, <laughs> points of view. I think it's an endless source of, uh, in the Sarah universe, <laughs> you definitely It'll be revisited. You know, they never go away. They, they're just at rest. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. They're in a lull. They're in a lull right now, but uh, I can't <laughs> wait to see what they come up with next. Those chuppies. <laughs> yeah. So those, that's another. My uh, nephews argument. are uh, two and three and they think that chuppies is real as like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. They've just known, yeah, like always I've grown up with it. Like, like, I sewed them like a chuppy like plush and like a Bobby Q plush. And I've like, I animated like a little stop motion video of chuppy with like a theme song. That's so amazing. like, they're like, yeah, why aren't there more chuppy videos? And I'm like, well, Aunt Sarah has to make them. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. I got to see these, uh, the chuppy videos. Yeah. <laughs> I there's, kind there's of want a chuppy out. plush. I don't know. Get an Etsy store up and running in the future. <laughs> I was thinking about it, but then I also like, as soon as it gets to the point where, Like, I don't know if I'm ever going to make it in Mm. uh, doing things for money because I'll do one thing and be like, oh, that was so fun. And then it's like, oh, I have to do the same thing over and over to make money. Ugh, I need help. I don't want to do that. Sarah, we got 571 orders for a chuppy plush. Yeah, you're just like sewing in your room. Renaissance women who don't mind sewing, then sure. Yeah, well, that would be, that's very cool. Uh, Look forward to the full (laughs) plush series available in the future. Mm hmm. Okay, um, so now we're going to get to your story, and I think that it might be emotional, sort of like what we're talking about, just from the title. I'm guessing just from the title. It's, it's, uh, it's not as emotional as you're thinking. Oh, great, <laughs> just, because I'm not sure. To, um, remind myself what the story was. Okay, so just the title is just a reminder that you know. Mm-hmm. So the title of the story is Sad by the Water. So I was in this comedy band for five years and I did a medium piece about it and it was me and my two best guy friends and we would write comedy songs and uh, the guitarist Tyler Patterson would play the songs and all three of us would sing and we'd have harmonies and they were all these kind of funny like Flight of the Concords-y kind of comedy songs and it was the thing that I was like this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life and I... 
and like I figured it out and everybody else doesn't know what they're doing but like I'm 23 and I know exactly what I'm gonna do with the rest of my life (laughs) clarity and yeah and um we were just like gunning it so we made this like pilot we filmed it we submitted it to the New York Television Film Festival and uh got rejected from the New York Television Film (laughs) Festival and And then a couple months later, the whole pilot was this idea of like, hey, it's kind of hard. Like, we're poor. We're doing this. We're gunning it really hard. But in the end, it was like, but you know what? What else are we going to do? We had like original songs in it. And the whole pilot was like, no matter what, we stick together. We're friends. We're going to be doing this forever. And then three months later, we broke up. Uh And I was like, oh, God. (laughs) Like, I had to reassess everything. Like, I felt like I didn't know what I was doing. And I still don't like, I'm still figuring out, you know, what kind of writing and what kind of art. But at that time it was like the one thing that I wanted to do, I couldn't do anymore. So I was working downtown in the loop in Chicago and I decided to just go for a sad walk. I was like, I really felt like I was going through like a romantic breakup, but just career wise. And, you know, I've had this string of day jobs for as long as I've been of working age. So I decided I'm going to go like stand on a bridge downtown and just be sad because I like being sad by the water. (laughs) Like there was a time a couple years before where I'd like just gotten out of a relationship and I really liked this guy and I asked him out on G chat and he very politely was like, no. And so I went to like the docks and I was like sitting at the edge of the dock, like crying gently. And I was like, this is perfect. Like I like being (laughs) dramatic like that. So I was going to pull that old bullshit. And so I go to the bridge and I'm like leaning on it and like kind of working up some tears, but it's my lunch break. So I have to like time it out. (laughs) And all of a sudden under the bridge comes one of those tour boats where they have like a roof open and like a bunch of chairs. And a friend of mine is giving the tour and she goes, Hey everybody, that's my friend, Sarah Shockey. Let's all wave. And everybody (laughs) waves and is like, hi, Sarah. Oh my God. Well, there goes that. I can't. I can't. Like, I can't have a sad day now because a boat full of strangers just cheerfully waved at me like I was the greatest person they'd ever happened to see wow. downtown, along with like all the architecture and. Yeah, you not know, you know, not every celebrity. not every tour gets the Sarah Shockey wave, right? It's yeah, only, it's a it rare. Even- since where I kind of walked away from the bridge and was like, well, you know what? I'm making this a bigger deal than it needs to be. And sometimes <laughs> you just got to keep going forward. <laughs> yeah. Like, and I did not feel like crying after that. It was like such a such a visceral turnaround to my day. <laughs> yeah, that's like a crazy shift, like an up, uh, uplifting, big upswing, right? Immediately. Where you're dwelling yeah, up with like tears. Mockingly, like, what are you even sad about? Yeah. Look at this world. It's so great. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, friends everywhere. Boat full of boats full of friends. Just like I love waving at people on boats too. It's like my favorite thing. I'm always a little shy about it, but like man, if I can get a good wave from a boat, whether I'm on it or off it, like oh, what a treat. Yeah, it's kind of like a thing with boaters uh, that you give a little wave. Uh yeah. so everybody be sure to wave at your local boaters. Mhm. Just toss them a wave. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great. It had a happy ending, right? It started sad, like it was trying to be sad. <laughs> it was maybe yeah, trying to trying be sad to, a I little know, too much. No way, you can't. You can't make it. And it's not really my way to end things sad. Like even if it's a little sad, I like there to be like a breath of hope behind it. Because like, man, when I read a book that I think is going to be really like sweet and nice, and then it ends sad, I feel like personally betrayed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I bet you could hear like the Christopher Cross playing in the background, right? When you're sitting by the dock and just staring yeah. out in the water, <laughs> just a sad, lonely sax. Yeah, and it's just like, how self indulgent is that? <laughs> like, at least I waited till my lunch break, but like, come on, get it together, Shocky. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, maybe next time, wait until <laughs> the end of the day. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that lovely story. So, what what happened? Where do you stand with your uh, your mates? With your from the band. So you get like a so 10 years I'm, later uh, recap. roommates with uh, Tyler, the guitar player. He's actually in the other room. I just texted him earlier and I was like, if I don't say hi when you come home, it's because I'm doing a podcast. Nice. And um, Tim, the other guy, Tim Dunn, is still a good friend of mine. He is actually uh, like this week or month moving in with his girlfriend and had, they just went to Paris together. So like Ooh, they're doing la, awesome. La. Wow, yeah, things are moving. Things are moving and shaking. Moving and shaking, yeah. It's, it's fun to think like if I could go back to myself five years ago and sort of explain how everything 
everything's okay now. I don't know if I would have wanted to hear it or not, but it's like, no, it's, it's totally fine. Yeah, you're like, uh, you, earlier you was like, just let me have my 10 minutes by the water, all right? <laughs> just let yeah. me chill well, by like, the... There was a time in college where we all went to this psychic fair, and these psychics were all sitting at tables, and you could go, like, kind of have your general future read. And this guy was, like, spot on about all this stuff, and he was telling me, like, you're going to move to Chicago, this thing's going to happen with your sister, like, this and that. And then I was like, what about my boyfriend? I'm in a long distance relationship. And he just kind of looks at me and he goes, he's going to have some issues that he needs to work on himself. And if you're willing to stick with him through it, you're going to be fine. And in my mind, I was like, oh, I'm definitely going to be willing to like, yes, yes, yes. And then like a year later, it was like, no, never mind. I don't want to stick through these specific cheating issues. (laughs) Yeah, that's the issue. And it's tough. I thought it was sweet of them to give me just enough information to be like, you can think what you want to think, but then you can't really like argue with what actually happens. Yeah, that's 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 what a good psychic will do, right? Mm-hmm. A good psychic like, yeah. will just sort of like make it general enough, leave it up to you. You connect the dots in your own life. You're like, oh, of course, of course, it was what Sharon yeah. said. Yes. And like find the meaning and then, you know, help help to have that help you grow as a person. Exactly. Thanks. Shout out to uh, psychics. So shout what, out to, I know. What shout a nice psychics. psychic. Yeah. Call, just go in. Get your palm read. Yeah. At, at least once. Yeah. Believe it as much as you want to. Because then you'll never know. I think a psychic convention, that would be kind of crazy. Would you, you could like try and be like, what's going to happen on exactly December 8th, 2018? And they I- were really good at like kind of running things <laughs> so that they didn't have to answer anything too specific. You just kind of, uh-huh. cause we were on college too. So like, I wasn't about to go in and be like, I bet some people went in and were like, oh, Hey, yeah. tell me this. But I was just kind of like, what do you think of me? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> yeah. Some people, I guess I have that gotcha attitude trying to, trying to yeah, yeah, expose yeah. them. But if you just, you know, go in and with an easy breezy attitude, it'll work mm-hmm. out. All right. So then this is the next part of the show where we move on hey, to Sarah's. <laughs> yeah, I, I need some interstitial music. So if there's any musicians out there, I don't know, listening or uh, being interviewed as part of this podcast right now, need some yeah. interstitial music to go through. Go the, get my ukulele off the wall. Oh. <laughs> need some uke in this. So, yeah. Okay. So the first tweet that you have sent in is uh, the following. <clears throat> When a male stranger or acquaintance tells me, me, that I am hot, oh, what a gift. I fall to my knees and thank them. Grateful scum I am. <laughs> <laughs> it's very funny to hear a boy read that tweet. Yeah. Not that you're a boy. I just felt like man sounded so aggressive. <laughs> yeah. I'm n- n- a, a not quite a boy, guy. not yet a man or whatever. I'm the, yeah. The male equivalent of the Britney Spears song. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so I get it. Sort of, we're touching on some patriarchal issues, right? We're talking about microaggressions. We're we're getting yeah. into it. You get it a lot, right? Being a uh, a modern woman in today's society, being a modern woman on the go who <laughs> dares to wear a summer dress. Yeah, it's um. There's so many times where there's unwanted attention, and it's just this weird thing that you just learn to deal with. And sometimes I wonder like, what's the ideal, like, what do they want out of this? Like, do they want me to just come into their life and fix all their problems while never seeming like I'm the one in control? Like what is going on? And, uh, I think that's where that idea came from of like, Oh master, please. It's always (laughs) like a weird, like gremlin voice in my head, Yeah, but I don't have the answer for how to deal with it. Yesterday I, uh, just, this guy was like, hey, beautiful, and started making, like, little, like, kind of noises, and I just, like, I didn't look at him. I just flipped him off and walked into a CVS and bought some water because I was going to do that anyway. Then I walked out and, like, didn't look at him at all, and I think he might have tried to say something, but, like, I had headphones in. Like, I was just, like, too cool for it Yeah. from the outside, but on the inside, there's this whole monologue of, like, why is this a thing? Like, why am I – because there's always that fear – that you're going to be kind of shitty back and they're, they're going to get like violent or aggressive with you. Like it's this weird balance and this weird game that's like I didn't want to play, but I find myself playing it all the time because it's just it's a thing. It's nuts. And I'm sorry that many, if not all ladies, have to go through this. 
and it's not and just it it's not just like construction workers story, right that it's all worth it yeah it's not just construction workers right it's just like it could be anybody no, it's anybody i mean in the city too it's like there's a whole variety i think i like go out of his way to like kind of elbow me in the boob and i didn't know what to do <laughs> so i just stopped and turned around and went dude yeah and i, I scared another man that wasn't involved oh you startled an innocent <laughs> I startled an innocence. Like I didn't know what to do. But oh, yeah, it's man. it's you never um sometimes you'll expect it, sometimes you won't like you know, sometimes you'll see somebody coming and go, Oh, I'm gonna go to a different part of the road. But then sometimes it's out of the blue and you're like, Hey, fuck you. I thought you were a regular civil person. <laughs> yeah. This is Oh man. And a lot of them don't know. Like I think a lot of people genuinely think that they are like giving a compliment or like trying to make somebody feel good when it's like you don't know the story of anybody else like maybe just leave people alone yeah as a general uh rule i would say i get that embroidered on a cushion <laughs> yeah check it check for it in your etsy store yeah <laughs> Women, get at me and yeah. then who wants to sew these pillows Get a chubby. In my mind, it's a bunch of beautiful women all in long dresses because they're Renaissance women. But men can do this too. Yeah, I think so. Well, great. Uh, yeah, and uh, I'm trying to keep that theme going. It's been uh, brought up in a few podcasts, but maybe just uh, be better to each other, people. Yeah, be better. Do better. Just a little bit. Everybody can do better, and that's a simple request from us here yeah. at the show. <laughs> from Sarah Joy Shockey <laughs> and your, your host, me. Straight from our hearts to yours. Be yeah. a little better. There we go. Even if you're great, you can be better. That's what I'm saying. Um, okay, so the next tweet uh, is kind of funny because it is a picture tweet. And this <laughs> yeah, do you is, have to describe it? This is a podcast. Uh, so, okay, the picture is it's a woman of in the early, uh, what would you say, like the 20s or something? Yeah, 20s. Yeah, before, right before the Depression hit. <laughs> the yeah, pre-Depression. So she's got that old-timey phone where you hold the mouth part in one hand and you hold the ear part up to your ear <laughs> with a wire uh okay so that sets the scene uh, so it's the title is i must have oreo sandwich for dessert like she's saying that on the phone and yeah it's like an ad but it comes on a tin it's a picture of the tin yeah one of those old-timey tins where you would keep mm -hmm. your oreo sandwiches uh, <laughs> presumably and then so the lady's on the phone i must have oreo sandwich for dessert and your quote is, or your caption rather is <clears throat> ma'am please stop calling 911 <laughs> <laughs> because she's calling oh, for man. an oreo <laughs> imagine imagine well that's the one that took off like that was such a fun silly little like i saw it in a toy shop in like rural indiana when i was visiting my family and just threw it up there and then i was like oh man I think this one's going to do well. And then it, it did. And I'm nerve. always happy when people are retweeting that one. Cause it's so dumb and so yeah. fun and sweet. It's silly. It's a little bit of nostalgia. Picture tweets are always fun, right? They always do a little bit better because there's a visual element. Yeah. And that's the, um, that's the one that Lin-Manuel Miranda likes. <laughs> He's retweeted it twice. Well, there you go. You know, you never know what's going to happen when you go through that tiny store and take a picture of an Oreo tin. That Lynn, yeah, creator like of Hamilton, <laughs> told myself that I would have been like, "Oh, get the fuck out of here! <laughs> Why do you look so good, me yeah. from the future?" <laughs> so, thank you for sharing that one with us. Wow, Lynn Manuel that was just Miranda. A brag. Yeah, I like yeah. it. Yeah, no, that's what this show is partially about: name drops, brags, humble brags. Uh, yeah, anything like that. <laughs> so next up uh, my ego. that's it so next up the tweet that we have uh, right here is <clears throat> I guess it's kind of a jingle so I'll try to sing it like the jingle yes please <laughs> <laughs> my penis has a first name it's O-S-C-A-R my penis has a second name. It's P E N I S. P E N I S. <laughs> I want to help you. Yeah, that would have been great. Uh, the sing along <laughs> there at the end. Not too embarrassing. And for Not sure, no one will ever cut that clip and use it uh, irresponsibly in the future. That's why I thought I'd back you up. So it's like, oh, he was doing it with a friend. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't just him. He just didn't. Uh, yeah, he's not just dropping the the P word. <laughs> he's not That's spelling the P yeah. word. So um, how do you come up with this? I don't know. I get, those, like, I get stupid stuff stuck in my head sometimes. And then 
it repeats so much that finally I'll just like put it out there. And then that's one where like, it'll run through my head and I'll go, Ooh, I had a tweet of that. And then I'll retweet it. And like, it always gets like a little bit, but like, it's not like, it's the only person who really genuinely loves it is me. Yeah. Well, that's fine too. And like, it's as long as it's out of your head, otherwise you're going to be singing P E N I S all day. I'm still all the time. Yeah. Every day. Oh man. My poor cats. They have to deal with so many genital related jingles just it- by, because they live here. Well, shout That's out to your cats life. for putting up with that. And, uh, yeah, they probably get these jingles in their head all the time, just from you. I like to do a, um, I'll replace lyrics with their names, too. Like, that's a big, like, swapping DJ and Bebo into songs. That's a big activity we do around here. It's very uh, exciting. I love that, too. I love um, swapping Uh, My favorite one is the Elton John. I guess that's why they call it the blues. But then I just uh, replace the blues with literally anything, whatever I'm talking about. (laughs) Oh, that's great. Ooh, that's going to be one that goes in the old I guess that's why they call it Sarah or whatever. Yeah. Oh, that's a great one. And just it works for everything. (laughs) It works for everything. It works for everything. (laughs) Okay. So thank you for those tweets. Uh, Lovely. You're so welcome. And now we move on to more tweets, but from other people. So the first Yay. is from the oft frequent regular mentionee of the show, Sky at I Am Space Girl. Definitely go check her out on Twitter. One of the best. So the really one f- of the best. Definitely. Uh, she's been mentioned multiple times. The listeners should be very familiar. The tweet that you have sent elected from Sky, it goes like this. When you drive directly next to me, I pretend our cars are holding hands. Isn't that so sweet? <laughs> it's just, yeah. Only Sky would think of something like that. Me and Sky are big into talking about how we're going to hold hands. We haven't met in person, but there are plans to. Plans to um, hold hands. We're in talks. <laughs> we're in talks. <laughs> right. Um, but our biggest dream is that we'll like hold hands by the ocean or like wear long white dresses and like hold hands and go walk into the ocean. Yeah, like all those old like booky trucks. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Um, and so I just anytime that there's a little sweet tweet about holding hands, I think it's so fun. I think I'm a big sucker for um, in Wally how he just wants to hold hands the whole time. <laughs> like right. it's so it's such a simple little sweet thing. And then the idea that she can make a drive nicer for herself by pretending that the cars are holding hands instead of like being like, oh, this car next to me is driving the exact same speed as me. Like it's just such a sweet, optimistic way of viewing things oh yeah i never thought about like that she's operating at level 100 yeah i never thought about that it's like a way to not get road rage around from everyone's bad driving you yeah, like oh like they're just, just holding just hands reframing yeah well that's beautiful thank you sky and thank you sarah for bringing that to our I, attention sky and i are gonna hold hands so hard <laughs> Uh, okay, the next tweet comes from the very funny Cullen Crawford at Hello yeah. Cullen on Twitter. So, are you familiar? Are you friends with this gentleman? He's a quite a famous. Cullen and I were uh, coworkers about seven or eight years ago, and we worked in the same office. And he was on the humor writing team. This is at Groupon. And I was in like the editorial, like I was just doing like research. And I thought all those humor writing guys were so funny. And then I didn't really get to know him until he was doing like late live show performances and I was doing the comedy band and we would kind of run into each other. And then after the band broke up, I was like, man, I really want to start a Twitter. I don't know what I'm going to do. And then I was kind of like, you know what? Colin seems to have like a fun way of doing this. Like it seems like they're very like fun, like thoughts and jokes. And like, it doesn't seem like he's judging himself when he puts stuff out there, which, you know, that's from my perspective. He probably is, but it was like this very nice inspiration to be like, like yeah, I can do this and I can make it fun because that's what I think he's doing. So he was like a big inspiration for me just kind of starting it in the first place. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So he's very funny and uh, it's great that you were able to draw inspiration from someone like that. Uh, it's pretty cool that you got to work with him or the same company, right? Yeah, we were um, at the same company. And then we were both in Chicago for a while. And then he moved out to New York. But uh, I feel like we talk more on Twitter than we ever did in person, which is, you know, sometimes just a nice way of things. Yeah, it's not. It's nice. It's easy, right? Yeah. Great. Okay, so the tweet of Cullen's is this one. Very funny. Muppet Babies should have had Statler and Wardolph as two middle aged men who just stood around making fun of the babies. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, Statler. 
not to correct your pronunciation, but Statler and Waldorf. Isn't that what I said? What I say? Well, I don't know. It sounded like it sounded similar, but not might have been exactly. my Canadian like, accent. <clears throat> Statler. You know what it probably Waldorf. was. Waldorf. I love that accent, by the way. Oh, thank you. Is it yeah. an accent though? Um, what part of Canada are you from? From Ontario, Toronto, Hamilton, GTA. Did you ever go to Honest Ed's before it closed? Yes, yes, of course. That's a uh, horrifying store. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's like a, a landmark, a big Toronto landmark, this crazy discount bargain store that was here forever, Honest Ed, like a patron of the city, one of the he created all yeah. these theaters and stuff, all the Mervish theaters. It was so big, and there's only one way to get in and one way to get out, and I felt like we were there for years. Yeah, that's how they get you. There's so many floors, and everything's just in a big bin. It says like a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> you just have I to bought root like around. A, a weird DVD from like another country. I don't know. It was a whole thing. Well, thank you for visiting our fair city. Thank you for uh, having me. I had a great time. We did the um, Toronto Sketch Festival a couple times. And when I get my passport renewed, I'll come back. Yes, please come back. I'd love to uh, yeah. have you around. Uh, definitely check that out. We're in talks <clears throat> now to hang out. You have There's a like lot of talks guy. going on. I, we're in talks. <laughs> There's so many talks going on behind the scenes. You're just constantly mm-hmm. in tons of different talks. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> okay. So the next tweet uh, comes from comedian Mark Ag. Is that correct how I'm saying that? Ag. Um, let's go with that. I've never met him. Okay. <clears throat> so it is at Mark AG on Twitter. <laughs> Another penis uh, tweet. Um, so the, That's always the third one. Yes. Thank you. Um, the tweet is, <clears throat> Reince Priebus sounds like Scooby-Doo saying nice penis. Did I see <laughs> even, I don't know how these pronunciations are coming out on your end, but they are difficult over here. Rice Priebus. Yeah, that's so funny to me. And that's another one that gets stuck in my head. Uh, okay, there you go. Yeah, you did you did it, and I heard it. Rice Priebus. Yeah, that's yeah. so funny. Scooby-Doo saying nice penis. Yeah, what a treat. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Scooby-Doo just... would never say that, and no one would ever call that out about Rides Priebus to his face. So it's just like, oh, what a nice little haven for that joke. Twitter. Yeah, it's quite the, the Venn diagram of that is nuts. <laughs> yeah. Good Great. job, Mark did. Yes, thank you, Mark, for that. And thank you, Sarah, for sharing those tweets. Uh, go ahead and follow those people Mining on Twitter. Tweets. Yeah, we're just taking them for our own content. <laughs> yeah, our <laughs> Great. Awesome. So now we move on to hit that ukulele. The questions from Twitter. Yay! Oh, I had such a hard time not immediately answering them. Yes, that is a tricky little thing. You have to wait. The t- questions get an- asked on Twitter, and then there's a bit of a delay, and then we record, and then there's an even longer delay, and then it is released. So it is quite the process. But thank you, obviously, to everyone who has sent in their questions. Uh, do follow at FOTS Pod on Twitter. Thanks. And have your question read on a future episode. So our first question comes from uh, our pal Nick. Get on the radio. Nickerdoodle uh, at one trick Tofani on Twitter. And the first few of his questions are one, who is your favorite wrestler, Nickerdoodle. real or fictional? Two, what would your pro wrestling mm-hmm. persona be? Sweet friend. And three, cake or pie? So the first question, uh, favorite wrestler, real or fictional? The three is easy. I want or three. Um, a lot of possibilities to take, but for some reason, pie sounds so good to me right now, so I'm going to go with pie. Okay, so the answer to um, number three is pie. Number one, my favorite fictional, we're winding back, <laughs> because uh, I, I had all this time to think about it, and the problem is is that it changes, and it, it'll be a different answer in a week, because I just love so many people for so many different reasons Mm. um right now my favorite wrestler is okada who is a japanese um the iwgp champion which is basically uh wwe in japan is new japan pro wrestling and it's you know like there's some crossover they do shows in the u.s and okada is just this extremely handsome extremely hardworking japanese guy who is known as the rainmaker and when he comes out he opens up his cape and all this paper money with his face on it comes down okay. and it's like it's amazing <laughs> nice um so i would say him right now there you go but that's subject to change okay well at the, as of this recording Okada gets a big mm-hmm. shout out. 
Yeah, and he's never going to really be out of the top favorites. What was the middle one? Uh, what would your pro wrestling persona be? So I have this idea that I want to... Um, my friend Paloma Star, a.k.a. the Sriracha Muchacha, when she's in the <laughs> ring, she wears like red and green, drinks Sriracha. It's like this awesome gimmick that she does. She was saying that maybe sometime if she can't get a partner... I can come and job, which is basically like she's going to crush me. But we could have, you know, like five minutes of walking around and talking. And I would love to do like a heel character, like a bad guy. But it would be like this woman who's been on vacation so long that she's like bought all the resort wear and now thinks that she could be a pro wrestler. She's just like, it was either that or I was going to get a tattoo. I don't know. How hard could it be? And she's like, you know kind of mean to the fans, calls them stupid, and then just, like, boom, gets the shit kicked out of her. Crowd's going to love that. Yeah. I feel like she has to have, like, a name like Donna Edwards or, like, something. Right, like, yeah, like a classic uh, lady on vacation too long name. Yeah. Linda something. Yeah, Linda, like, you know, Linda Marcus. Oh. <laughs> We'll work on it. We'll work on it. But I like that persona. Yeah. I like that you uh, went immediately to be a heel character, too. I always want to be a heel manager. Like, that's, I'm always telling Paloma that if she ever wants me to come out and just like yell at everybody for, like, yes, I would love to. I'd love to be horrible. Yeah. The little manager guys, those are, those are a real fun part of it, too. Yeah. It just adds so much to it, especially because it's like this person that's all talk and is like not a wrestler. Every now and then they'll like take a bump or something like that, but they're you know they they're in it because they can talk, not because they can fight. Yeah, they have their big wrestling friend to protect them. Exactly, Paul Heyman. All right, so uh, we asked Nick to submit way more questions because we thought that was great. So- Nick's a workhorse. <laughs> Yeah, so we're just getting all these questions from one source. So more questions from Nick uh, at One Trick Tofani. The final three questions he asks are, one, what got you interested in art? I've just been drawing forever. Like, I think as soon as I was able to use a pen and pencil, I remember clearly in kindergarten, I would make, uh, like, story series and um, color on a page and a few words. Like, basically exactly what I'm doing now. I've just always been doing. Like, I'll think back to when I was in first grade, and I'd be trying to work out, like, spacing of letters on a page where I would, like, want to put an exclamation point, but I thought I only had room for a period. And then I'd say in my head, if you can fit a dot, you can fit a line and like all these weird, like, uh, (laughs) like spacing things. And like, it's the exact same thing that I'm doing now or like color combinations with markers. I remember like spending so long drawing hair on a girl and drawing, like just coloring with the yellow marker, then coloring with the Brown and then coloring with the yellow to try to get like a new shade out of it. Mm. And I feel like that's almost something that wasn't ever taught. It's just like, I've just always been doing that. And even when I wasn't like putting my art out, I always had little sketchbooks or like, I can't be on the phone without doodling. You know, it's just like, it's just part of it. But obviously like seeing art and seeing movies and cartoons and, you know, going to museums and stuff like always is like, Ooh, other people are into the same kind of thing. This is awesome. Yeah. That, uh, the community, right. The general art community is, uh, yeah, it's nice to see and share. Um, I guess Nick also is an artist himself. He actually did a really funny drawing of guest Travis, Professor underscore Hinkley, oh, <laughs> uh, on the uh, the FOTS pod, one of the threads. You got to go check that out. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really funny likeness of Travis. So it was it was quite popular in the mentions of that. So shout out to Nick. Thank you. And go check out yeah. his uh, drawings and art. He's great. Great. So the next question, again from Nick, is who is your favorite artist? So this one I had to look up because and really think about because it's hard to say. But I think the artist that most resonates with me is Quentin Blake, who does all the roll doll drawings and kind of similar style to like Shel Silverstein. Um, and also um, I'm blanking on the name, but the author who did all the drawings for a Phantom Toll booth. Um, it's just these really funny, cute, expressive, emotional line drawings. And I remember there are so many like in Matilda and in the BFG where I would just stare at these pictures because I felt like he just got their faces perfect. And the dots, like the eyes were just dots, you know, and it was like somehow in so few lines and so simply he told the exact story that Roald Dahl was telling in words, but he told it in pictures and like together it just made the story more of an experience than just one or the other on their own. And it was just fascinating to me. 
Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, it makes it makes a story come to life for sure. You're able to picture it. Uh, yeah. And the simplicity, right? Just using the I'm few so strokes. I'm so simplicity, yeah. How do you do that? It's like, uh, right, like writing a simple Twitter joke, like a one-liner. Just only yeah. you can use a few words, but uh, for drawing. And, yeah, that's great when you can really evoke emotions from using some simpler imagery. Yeah, I love that. I feel like there are so many uh, – I always had a hard time getting into, like, superhero comics – um, I think because the action and the amount of things going on in them were always hard for me to take in. And anytime like I'm making stuff, I try to make it so simple. Like there'll be times where I wrote out an idea and it's like two lines on one page. And I'm like, no, this takes up way too much real estate. I just want the picture. <laughs> so they'll always end up being longer or like more panels because I just want to keep them so simple. Each one. Yeah. More impactful too, right? Uh, you keep it simple. It really gets the point across. Yeah, I hope so. I like to find the balance because, you know, it would be frustrating for each page to be one word, but yeah. sometimes I do that anyway. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if it's the right word, if it's the yeah. perfect word. Um, okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, okay. The final question from Nick, thank you very much, is what do you love most about Garfield the cat? Uh, I just love um, what a part of my childhood he was because those Garfield comic books – were one of the earliest books that I really took an interest in getting my own because I felt like I could read through them so quickly and I could understand them. Like I never really felt left behind with Garfield. Yeah. And those books are such a big part of like, I had them on road trips. I would read them when I was eating snacks after school. Like I can't see Garfield and not be like, Oh, that's nice. And like all the parodies and like Garfield minus Garfield. And like I have a friend named Sean Bowers who's been like, Draw, he drew every single Pokemon as like a variant of Garfield. So they all had like <laughs> Garfield, like whiskers and like, it was the weirdest project, but also like oddly comforting. Cause you're like, yeah, I know that tail. I yeah. know those stripes like Garfield. That's part of all of our childhood. If you're, you know, our age in America or Canada or wherever Garfield comics can be found. It's yeah. very sweet. No, me too, for sure. I uh, had a big, huge uh, collection of those Garfield books. And when you get the ones that had three books in one. The fat cat The pack. fat cat. Yeah, you're yeah. like, jackpot, jackpot. This will definitely do me for a cottage weekend. Yeah. <laughs> or something. Um, okay, so thanks for your questions, Nick. Uh, everyone go check them out at One Trick Tofani on Twitter. Uh, next question comes in from uh, friends of the show alumni Gwen at Miss Gwen, Gwen L. So her questions, uh, a lot of art-centric questions, so they sweet. say, uh, when did you start drawing, and more importantly, what's your favorite color, and why? Oh, man. So I think we went over when I started drawing, because that was about kindergarten. Actually, it was a little before kindergarten, because I remember I used to draw um, big, big, squiggly eyes and a smiley face, and then slash, 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 slash for two arms and two legs. And then I love drawing the hair like a rainbow over the girl. Okay. Because I love drawing girls. That's, like, always one of my favorites. So I think I must have been, like, three or four when I started drawing nose. And my brother showed me how to draw a nose. It was just a dot. But then I would go back and forth on whether or not I drew a nose. <laughs> Favorite color is very interesting because I... So much of the work that I do is blending of colors. So I do like these weird tricks where I'll like color a base with like colored pencil or crayon and then I'll dip a Kleenex in water and then dab markers onto the wet Kleenex oh, and then wow. sort of paint in a weird way of like I have office supplies, not watercolors. So like this is how I get that kind of like moist look. That's cool. Um, so that being said, I think it's like a combination of like this like like a pale yellow gold because there are so many different shades of yellow that you can do. Yeah. And you can do this really cool sun effect where you leave the middle white and then color around it with like increasing shades of yellow to emphasize like how bright the middle part is. I think that's like right now my thing like shades of yellow fall into my favorite color. Okay, so shades of yellow and you're using different crazy like techniques to bring out these different uh, shades, right? Yeah, or like it's cool to like look at like I'm looking at the sky right now and trying to figure out how I would draw it or like how I would paint it because it's like, you know, you have all these different colors, but there's still a limitation in like it's the sky like it's not, you know, one Crayola color. Even though there is a sky blue one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's only part in this of case, color. in this case, yeah. it, there is. But most of the time, right, you have to find that blend. You got to use a pencil crayon, then a marker, and then erase some of it, and then get a Kleenex. 
And it's, yeah, and then dab it. I have like a weird it. colored pencil that's just a blending tool. Like it doesn't do anything, but like it can kind of blend pencil pretty good. So it's like, yeah, I have all these tools. I'm always like building my collection of like, you know, paint markers and all that stuff. Yeah, it's very cool. And everyone can check out the final product in those cool stories on Medium. Yeah. Great. I think it's just medium.com slash at Sarah Joy Shockey, which is like, hey, that's my Twitter too. Heck, follow you on all the things. Heck, <laughs> two birds, one stone. <laughs> yeah, everyone, visit, like, share, retweet. So the next question comes in from friend of the show, Malt underscore Skull on Twitter. Yay, another friend. Our Love good our too. good pal uh, from Finland. Um, yeah. Now his question is, how loud is a screaming goblin? In reference to, like, a tiger roar or a motorhead concert, for instance? That's a good sound comparison. I think a gremlin scream is, like, a more pleasant siren. Okay. Yeah, like, it's like, you don't want to put your ears up, because, like, you don't want to plug your ears, because you're like, wait a minute, this this could either, either, you know, like, curse me or bring me good luck, but it's also, like, it's pretty loud. So you don't know, and it's loud, but it's not sort of off-putting? It's not the worst thing. Like a siren, you know, like, hmm, something's probably kind of wrong if we have to drive through the streets, you know, wailing to get everyone out of the way. With this, it's kind of like, are they happy or is there a problem? Mm. In my mind, that's how gremlin screams work. Well, there you go, uh, Malt. Very interesting question and very interesting answer. I did hear a siren in the in the background before. Is everything okay in Chicago? I'm gonna have to ask. Oh, it's always there are always <laughs> sirens, especially when it gets hot. Like that's the weird thing. It's recently gotten very hot, mm-hmm. and there's always more sirens. I don't know what people are doing. They're knocking their grills over. Come on, people. Come on, Chicago, get it together. Wait, wasn't that where the cow knocked the bucket over and the? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why we need to be careful. Yeah, you guys need to be real careful. (laughs) Yeah, you guys need to be extra careful. Keep your cows away from those flammable buckets. Uh, Absolutely. I condone condone bucket safety at all times. Okay, so then we're looking at the final question. It comes in from a good friend of the show, Timmy at the Timmy Toes on Twitter. Timmy Toes, another good. These are just such fun, nice people. I love every single one I like. Love everybody who sends these questions. Thank you again so much for everyone uh, who sent the questions. And again, FOTS pod on Twitter and have your question Mm -hmm. read on a future show. So now we get to Timmy's tweet. And his question is like this. What was your favorite belonging that got lost or stolen? So my favorite belonging was my teddy bear that I was given when I was very young. Uh, Excuse me, Betsy Bear. I named my bear Excuse Me when I was like two because I thought it would be funny because people would come up to me and say, what's your bear's name? And I'd go, excuse me. And they'd go, what's your bear's name? And it was like this weird little like who's on first thing where after a while they'd be like, okay. Your bear's name is, excuse me, how clever. And it's like, yeah, what a what a joke for a two-year-old. And this was the bear that I had for all time. And it's not even that I don't have the bear anymore. I have, like, pieces of it because I loved it so much and carried it around so much that uh, it sort of disintegrated. So for the last couple of years, I only had feet of the bear. And then okay. my cat started hiding them. And so I still have the bear's head, which is, like, not a charming thing to, like, have anywhere. <laughs> so it's, like, put away. And my cat stole all of my bear's feet, and I don't know where they went. <laughs> Only the cat will know. Uh, will know. And she's so dumb. I don't think she does. I think she forgets where she puts them. We have a lot uh, of issues. With, probably has a huge you know. stash somewhere. Yeah, I feel planet. like I'm going to move and then be like, well, there's all the bear's feet and my Tamagotchi. <laughs> my Tamagotchi. Oh, I need like, to feed I, you. I didn't move that from my parents' home. How did you get that? <laughs> uh, Tamagotchi. I did have one. Did you have one? Oh, I had a Tamagotchi. I had a Gigapet. I had like a baby Gigapet. I had like one other one. I remember when we went on vacation, we were like riding mules down the Grand Canyon. My dad went like all out for this vacation. It was the biggest one we'd ever done. And we're stopping for like water breaks and I'm like feeding my Tamagotchi. <laughs> <laughs> like, like we have problems with kids now. It's like, no, kids are always just kids. Yeah. Just it's, let, it's... Them, they're, let them feed their Tamagotchis. Don't ever worry, since the dawn of Tamagotchis, kids have been... <laughs> Dealing with technology on vacation. Well, that brings us to the end of the questions. So thank you very much, uh, Sarah. Thank you, everyone who answered a question, asked a question. Oh, my God. 
friends. We, I'm all so my internet thankful. friends. Yes, all the good people. Thank you very much. Um, all right. Good people who didn't put questions in. I want to shout out to them too. Yo, so many people, great people, did not submit questions. <laughs> and that is, you know what? Completely hey, fine. That's fine. Yeah. Because there's always a chance to submit a future question at FOTS Pod this is on Twitter. Your call to action. <laughs> the call to action? Yeah. Follow FOTS Pod on Twitter and be sure to send a question to the future uh, guest and it will be read on the show. Boom. I guess I need to put in more like sound effects at that point. <laughs> Sarah Joy Shockey. Oh, that's. Perfect. That sounded really good. <laughs> Great. Um, so now we're winding it down. It's the final uh, little bit. Then we're going to talk about wrestling, if we haven't talked about that. Um, so you're pretty into it. Pretty into wrestling. Yeah, I'm so into it. Um, all kinds. It's been all kinds. It's been uh, almost four years. Uh, I got into it because my ex-boyfriend's best friend was um, got his brother got the WWE Network, which is like an encyclopedia of like every WrestleMania, every raw like all these matches all in one place it's just like netflix for pro wrestling so they got into it and started to watch raw on monday nights and i started watching it with them and saw dean ambrose come out one night with uh he had stolen a hot dog cart in new york and was like beating (laughs) up his presumably his friend seth rollins with the hot dog cart and it was just like man oh man what is this i love it i love everything about this <laughs> and um i wasn't allowed to watch wrestling as a kid so i'm kind of getting it all out now and mm. it's just like it's so fun you find another person who watches watches wrestling like no matter how much they watch or know about and it's kind of like you're speaking your own language with them it's very fun yeah that's true the wrestling community is kind of nuts and it spreads out so far and across different generations now uh yeah so it's like you get these new kids coming up and watching wrestling and then you got like the middle-aged people and the older people who watch like in the 80s and everyone's influenced by everybody and yeah it's wild it's kind of nuts yeah i watched it uh, i never really got into it but i my friends got into it heavy in the stone cold steve austin the rock uh era such a good time that yeah era? i just watched a clip of them the other day uh singing a duet of margaritaville and i was like this is just wonderful like what a treat that this exists <laughs> yeah those so those are the fun old days we got the people's people's everything the elbow you got the eyebrow you got different people mm-hmm. smelling what other people are cooking it was uh it mm-hmm. was good i really liked uh, the rock whatever happened to that guy yeah i don't know if he's doing anything these days. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, he's taking over the world <laughs> yeah so i guess i guess wrestling you know does lead to something yeah it's cool to see what people do like obviously there's a lot of tragedy in wrestling but it's also like there's so many people who like Diamond Dallas Page has uh, DDP yoga and is just like his whole focus has been like helping these guys like, you know, sort of find peace through like doing yoga and like a lot of people like helping them get off drugs or stop drinking. And it's like, what a sweet thing to have led from, you know, like doing wrestling for so long. It was wow, that's cool. amazing. Yeah, definitely shout out to DDP down. Yeah. <laughs> Diamond Dallas Page. Is that uh, correct? Yeah, that's correct. Cool. I, yeah, I like yoga. I would do DDP yoga. Yeah, I do uh, yoga with Adrian. She does YouTube videos, and she has so many of them. And I find that I can just shut the door of my room and do yoga all by myself. And it's uh, it's very nice. Yeah, that's great. You got to find the yoga that works with you because there's so many different types. Yeah, um, or just like the exercise. You know, like I hated yeah. like running, and I hated. Like, even finding gym clothes where it's like, yeah, if I'm just doing yoga in my room, it doesn't matter what I wear. No, exactly. Yeah, ex- you're you know, right. When in there's the, cats. The exercise. You got to find uh, the whatever activity works for you. Yeah, so, so find something that you don't, don't hate yes. and just do that a little bit. Just do it a little bit. It's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Don't put pressure on yourself. I'm talking directly to somebody. I don't know who, but it, it's resonating with somebody. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that person. Me too. I'm doubling yeah. down on that. <laughs> Doubling down on that uh, statement, and I hope you, I hope you change and do something you like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Just a saying. little way that makes you feel good, my friend. Yeah, I'm just trying to improve everyone's lives a little bit. So, yeah. <laughs> um, I guess that brings us now to the end of the podcast. Um, I think I've mentioned all of your different things. Uh, you got to read Sarah's writing on Medium. You got to check out her podcast, Marty and Sarah Love Wrestling, on iTunes at Marty Sarah Pod on Twitter and Instagram and Medium dot com slash at Sarah Joy Shockey. Check it all out. It's all good. Read all the stuff. Thank you Do it so all. Much. Yeah. I- 
love that you're doing this. It's so fun because there's so many people that interact so much and yet you never hear their voice or you never kind of get their take on like, hey, what's behind all those funny tweets you put out? Like, this is very cool. Thank you very much, Sarah, and I appreciate that. And thank you, everyone, for listening. Uh, Now I will end the show by playing the podcast theme. And thank you for listening, and goodbye. Until next week. Bye, everybody. Bye. From Chicago. Get that pizza out of the oven. It's deep dish. (laughs) So much dish cheese everywhere. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode with Sarah. Be sure to follow her on Twitter at Sarah Joy Shockey and follow the show at FOTS Pod and send a question for future guests. Next week's friend of the show is Rachel Mandick. Please subscribe to the show on your preferred podcast app. Be sure to rate and review and visit stephenwskinner.com. Thank you so much for listening. Have a good, good one. one. <laughs> Thanks, Kat. <laughs>